Welcome back. Now, how much is an Olympic Games worth to a city? Well, Britain's Prime Minister David Cameron said it could generate an extra billion pounds worth of business now and much more later. But politicians aren't the only ones hoping to milk this extraordinary focus on London. We've got all kinds of cultural events, including an African village at Hyde Park, open house at the Africa Centre in King Street, Covent Garden, special houses dedicated to Jamaican, Trinidadian and Nigerian culture, and a month-long festival called Africa Utopia. With me now is one of the stars of Africa Utopia, Mina Salami, who's also known as the blogger Miss Afropolitan. Welcome to the show, Mina. Now, what's it been like, this, this focus on Africa with all this culture? I see you are wearing Adinkra symbols for your <laughs> earrings. Yes. What's definitely. it been like? Um, it's been really fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I think we definitely, there's a real kind of desire to have these spaces where we yeah. can where we can speak about issues and um, also celebrate a lot of the African culture that we have. And um, the Olympics has brought many opportunities alongside to do that. And yeah. Africa Utopia um, has been really well curated by Hannah Poole. Um, I think yeah. we've, it's, we, you know, we've had a very Hannah broad... Poole, a writer? Hannah Poole's a writer for The Guardian. I think she's also um, working for Arise magazine yes. at the moment, and she's curated Africa yeah, Utopia. She's been on this program in the past. Yes. I okay, know great. Just testing you. Okay. Well, you you, you, you <laughs> yeah. took part in the panel on women, inspiration, and leadership. So yes. That's your kind yeah. of thing, isn't it? <laughs> and tell us how that went and what, what came out. Because I believe Anjali Kijo, the singer, was also on your panel. Um, yes, I took part on this very, very amazing panel. It was a very rare occasion, I think, to have um, five, we were five women yeah. who are African feminists and doing a lot of work on, on very different scales. And Angelique Kijo, who, you know, is kind of a forefront figure of yeah. the African feminist movement um, and who is proof of the kind of impact that arts has um, in order to, to make change. And, um, yeah, the panel was, um, I think it was, for me, the, the thing that I really took out of it was, I mean, first of all, just the opportunity to be on yes. this panel and to bond with Well, is that because of your blog? People um, say, we like what she says, or this woman's controversial, let's get her on the panel. Um, I, I think, yeah, my blog is um, popular, and then I also do a lot of different things that kind of branch off of yep. the blog. Um, the key thing that I took away from it was probably this, um, this, this yearning that people really have to, to have these conversations. Yep. Um, I think when it comes to African women, there's kind of, I mean, to generalize, there's yeah. two stories. There's one where you have, um, you know, the kind of pitiable, distressed African woman. Who's giving who's, life and at the same time is being crushed. Exactly. Mm. And I mean, a very real situation as well, you know, to do with, there's a lot of abuse and violence yeah. and a lack of empowerment, etc. But it's kind of either that story or another one, which is also true, but also, um, which is very celebratory and kind of um, r almost poetic, romantic. Well, Joyce Banda, mother president of Malawi, you mean that yeah, kind of thing? Um, or, or more so the kind of, you know, Mother Earth connection, oh, right, okay. and yeah, no yeah, matter yeah. how hard life is, um, you know, we're so connected to Mother, mother Earth, and that yeah. gives us strength, which is also true, I think, but what happened at this panel, um, Women, Leadership and Inspiration, was something that's probably somewhere in the middle of these two, and I, I, I felt like what I really took away from it was that people want to have that conversation, which is... Um, just rational, yeah. adult, you know, to the point, and how do we tackle these very real issues that we're frustrated with? Mm. And how fertile would you say the ground is for not just these conversations, uh, part of Africa Utopia, but this general focus on uh, broader African culture? We had something called the BT River of Music, and we had a special Africa stage there. You know, Hugh Masekela yeah. was there, Angelique herself performed, Baba Mao, lots of other people. Um, do you get the impression that the African community here in London, the African and Caribbean communities, are aware of it and are going to these things, or is it getting drowned out with all the focus on? Um, the world coming to London because everybody's trying to say we are Dutch, we are American, we are from here, we are from there. Come and see us now. Um, no, I think I think the African um, and African Caribbean communities are definitely still seeking out events that are kind of not catered to us right. solely, but that definitely are incorporating an element of of African and African diaspora cultures. Um, and because there is a there's a lack of those kinds of events in really mainstream spaces. So something like the BT River, yeah. um, I was there and it was it was amazing. You know, there were a lot of um, Afro-Caribbeans there as yeah. well as people from other countries. Um, so no, I don't think, I mean, I think we're Although we're it's pushed out to kind of extreme East London, whereas the, the others were much closer to the center of the river. Oh, that's, did, me being, that's me being paranoid, Garnet. <laughs> you know what, now that you say that, I'm it's slightly... I didn't actually know that. Pontoon Dock. Do you know where that is? Pontoon Dock. No. 
Oh, it's like kind of east, east, east of the river, getting it, towards the Thames estuary. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice place, but it was very far out and quite hard to find. Um, a bit so like yeah. a live Earth, what was it, in 2005 when Geldof put the Africans in Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Must you, must you go there? Yeah, but we, 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 we went there. We went On this programme, we've been there. Yeah. I'm just thinking about something else. I mean, it's great that we've had the Africa Utopia and some of these other events, mm. but um, are they getting the exposure? Are Africans, Caribbeans going there? And is one of the problems marketing or lack of marketing prowess, and you guys are both experts in this. Glenn, what do you think? Well, uh, I'll almost refer to my colleague, uh, yes. Sherry, on it, because uh, I, I, I think marketing is one of these things that we as black people don't do very well. Yeah. And I say that advisedly, mm. because actually it's the first principle we're, we're taught as children. And in the Caribbean, where I'm from, we, we communicated around the big mango tree. Yeah. So it's something which is in our DNA. And I'm, I often struggle when events are supposed to talk to me don't talk to me. And I wonder why it's because I'm not listening to the right radio station or, yep. or tuning to the right blog. So I think there's a lot of work to, to be done there. And I think we as a company at Soul Marketing um, set our stall out 10 years ago to make marketing and communication so simple that we still come and whisper in your ear when yeah. there's an event happening. So that's my view mm. and I hope things will change. Yeah, what say you, Sherry, on that? I hope it changes. I mean, I'm going off. We were just chatting in the break about uh, an event I'm going to, which is uh, Bob Marley's children yeah. are here. And, and there's a big event in Brixton um, today. And everybody in the room, every journalist that I've met, that I've spoken to, they don't know about it. And I'm thinking, well, well, why, why don't they yeah. know about it? And if we don't know about it, how can we tell the people? Yeah. Um, so something's very wrong. So how do you overcome that, Mina? Um, because you're marketing not just um, yourself as a writer, as an African woman, but also your wares. You have a boutique. I, I do, yeah. Um, I have a boutique which I launched as a tribute to the African women's decade, yeah. um, 2010 to 2020. And I sell products that are made by women of African heritage from all over the world. And um, I think because I'm quite involved with fashion via my boutique and also I do some fashion curating on the side, um, one of the things that I notice is that we, at least in the fashion world, there's a, we want to kind of go into the mainstream, into yeah. the Grazias and the L's and, you know, and, uh, and for me that's much less interesting than being able to go into maybe Essence or Ebony, yeah. I don't know, and even, you know, I think of Latin America and yes, countries indeed. where... Look at the population there. Yeah, and um, I think when it comes to marketing, that's, that's something that we, you know, we should be marketing to ourselves more, not, yeah. Yeah. not just from an Afrocentric point of view, but just, I mean, it's, yeah. it's smart business. When I you're think. putting these messages out there, I mean, are you getting traction, to use that word? I mean, are people responding? Yeah, um, certainly, uh, you know, the response to the boutique has been fantastic. Um, uh, because some it's a potential clients here, you know. I know. Oh, really? okay. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. And with that, we end today's edition of Shoot the Messenger. Remember, you can watch us all over again with the repeat on Vox Africa, and you can catch specially selected highlights on our website, voxafrica.co.uk slash stm. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Bonsuman. Big thanks to my guests. They were Miss Afropolitan, Mina Salami, Sherry Ann Dixon, Joel Campbell, and Glenn Yearwood. And thanks to you for watching. Till the same time next week, cheers and goodbye.